put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. HF movie review. George Newman, played by Al Yankovic, keeps getting fired from the small time jobs that he's taking because he keeps daydreaming. He has way too much of an imagination. He also seems to have emotional issues. He goes really fast back and forth between being you know, basically fine and being borderline suicidal, but I don't think that's what's getting him fired. Also, he has this problem with forgetting dates with his girlfriend, but anyway, he and his best friend Bob both get fired from a burger place, and they, yeah, they don't quite know how to get by. So when George's uncle wins a wins the deed to a small UHF station and is looking for someone to manage it, they, you know, George gets the chance and he now has to try to make some money at this decrepit old place with only two people working there when he starts. The really strange and creepy Philo who seems to have made a lab out of his home, which is, in fact, the TV station, and the... Uh, Fran dresher Fran Drescher character, played by Fran Drescher. The... There, there is, of course, a rival TV station, a network station, run by the film's antagonist, R.J. McFletcher, Kevin McCarthy, who is a deliciously over-the-top, mustache-twirlingly evil villain, for no other reason than for there to be an evil villain. He, he really has no real reason to be quite that. He, he, he runs a TV station, but yeah. Now, this... Maybe I should get out of the way immediately. This does follow the formula of the light 80s comedy pretty much to a T. You're, you're going to see almost all of the developments coming. And, yeah, it's, you know... With that said, it is a good entry into that subgenre. And... What you're really here for is not, you know, the, the compelling plot. You're here because of Weird Al. Weird Al is known for making great, you know, music parodies. Often energetic, always very creative lyrics, and just living up to his name. Weird, you know. And... Yeah, when, when making a movie with, and this, this is the Weird Al Yankovic movie. This is not a movie that, you know, happens to have Weird Al in it. Not even a movie that happens to star Weird Al Yankovic. This is the Weird Al Yankovic movie. You know, back when, you know, yeah, you know, the, the way other people got their big, you know, movie, even though they weren't known for being in movies. And so, obviously, you know, you don't want to translate the his comedy stylings to the big screen, and they do quite well at that. In place of song parodies, we of course have movie parodies, so, you know, we open with an Indiana Jones parody, for example, and, yeah, throughout it, you know, they, they use his, both the television station, which of course 
shows, you know, it actually, it, it makes a name for itself in the film by showing weird stuff. And yeah, you know, you hear some show titles and there'll be stuff like, that, that only Weird Al would come up with, you know, there's like the, the Volcano Worshippers Hour, you know, stuff like that. Underwater bingo for teens. Yeah, I, I swear I'm not making this up. Weird Al made this up. And, you know, they also show some TV ads and then, you know, there are his dream sequences. Those both allow for parodies of big movies or, you know, television. They have that, you know, everyone who was, everyone who knew about America in the 80s and, and television ads in the 80s knew about the crazy something or other guy who sold cars at a really cheap price and they have a parody of that here which yeah yeah now that does mean that the main focus is of course the humor and I will say there are a few things that do kind of fall flat and you know so, some of them some of the jokes and gags never really had that much hope to begin with, honestly. So some of them just don't repeat well. But I would say that this is only really you know, sixth of the material. The vast majority of, you know, jokes and gags in this are really, really funny. But as a good example, you know, in that opening with the Indiana Jones parody, you have a joke like, you know, and all of it, almost all of it is goofy. Some of it is, you know, kind of disgusting and some of it is clever but uh, yeah as an example in that opening sequence one of the jokes is that Weird Al is Indiana Jones and he looks basically exactly like an in Indiana Jones only with the trademark mustache you know the the hair don't remember what that hairdo is called the, the curly hair you know Weird Al and those big ass glasses and that's really the joke, you know, that he looks exactly like Indy, except for that. That's one of the jokes. And, you know, and f as an example of one of the less funny jokes, also in that opening sequence, he uses the Indiana Jones whip to whip someone's arm off. And that on its, you know, it, it's unexpected, certainly, but it's just not terribly funny, you know. But... Yeah, I should mention a few more of the supporting cast. Well, I suppose there's really only one left. Michael Richards, I think, is you know, whatever the the everybody knows him as Kramer from Seinfeld, and yeah, he has a moderate role in this as this basically this big kid. And excuse me, he is a janitor. And George gives him a job after he gets fired by R.J. Fletcher, you know. So, yeah, and he's kind of either going to really annoy you or you're going to fall in love with him. Which is basically how everyone in the film, you know, everyone in the film has either of those reactions pretty much. So, yeah. And, you know, the there's also a girlfriend because Weird Al can't go for very long without making really bitter jokes about, tough, you know, about, about bad relationships and, and, you know, being broken up with and stuff like that. So there's, of course, a girlfriend character, Terry, I believe, who is played by Victoria Jackson, who I don't know that I've seen in anything else, but she she has a little bit of a nasal thing going on here. I, I don't know if that was like for this movie or if that's just how she sounds. I should maybe get into that as well. As many of his fans already know, Weird Al is Jewish. And as such, there is a lot of Jewish comedy. You know, the, the fact that Fran Drescher's in this is not an accident, I don't think. You know, there... No, so so you got you you've got the family and the you know the, the yeah the 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 excited family members you have you know various yeah basically you know there there are some some very Jewish jokes very a lot of you know as is common to Al self-deprecating humor. 
And I suppose that more or less covers it. But but yeah, again, it is a good, you know, light 80s comedy in addition to being... I mean, basically, if you don't like Weird Al, you are not going to like this movie. This is made for Weird Al fans. But if this is the first you see of Weird Al, it's not going to be like... You know, there, there's not a ton of references. In fact, I'm not sure there are really any references to his music. It's basically just he is playing this character. And he, his acting isn't bad, by the way. In general, the acting's certainly fine enough. And... Yeah, you know, it's just, if you like that kind of humor, and and or you like Weird Al, this is a movie for you, and it, you know, it's not even necessarily a guilty, it's, it's not even a, a guilty pleasure, it's a genuinely pretty good movie. And, yeah, I, I believe that covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.